Okay, trig lecture 224, 225. Uh, the student will find the value of a trig function given the value of a dri different trig function. We've done stuff like this in the past. It's a little walk down memory lane. As the old saying goes, the key to learning is repetition. Uh, we're going to be messing around with you know, secant, cosecant, and cotangent instead of sine, cosine, and tangent, but it's no big deal. Uh, let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. Find the value of an indicated trig function. Find the secant of theta, that's what I'm looking for. If the cotangent of theta is 3 fourths. I'm just going to talk my way through how I would do this if I were me, and I am. I'll say, well, if the cotangent is 3 fourths, I'm thinking to myself, well, the tangent is opposite over adjacent, so this is adjacent over opposite. And I'm going to draw a right triangle. I'm not going to pay any attention to scale because the scale doesn't matter. I'm going to put my theta right here. I'm going to say adjacent over opposite. Adjacent is right here. If I put my angle right here, adjacent would be 3. Opposite would be 4. And now I'm in a position to find the secant of theta. Well, what's the secant of theta? Well, that's the inverse of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so this would be hypotenuse over adjacent. So in order to find the hypotenuse over the adjacent, I have to find the hypotenuse. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. I think you can tell at a glance that it's going to be 5. But in case you can't, this would be, we'll call it the hypotenuse, call it C, A squared plus B squared would equal to c squared. This is 9 plus 16. That's supposed to be a 9. Is equal to c squared. 25 is equal to c squared. Take the square root of both sides and we'll get c is equal to plus or minus 5, but because we're talking about the length of this hypotenuse right here, the length of anything, is non-negative. So we're going to ignore the negative root. C will be 5. So instead of a C, I'm going to put a 5 here. And now I'm going to evaluate the secant function. Let me scroll a little bit. So I'm looking for the secant of theta. So I'm going to say, if I haven't made any mistakes, that the secant of theta is the secant of theta is the inverse of the cosine. And the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so I got hypotenuse over adjacent, which would be 5 over 3. And that's what we're looking for. Okay. And hopefully that's right. And let's see if I can find my key. It's got to be right. Yay, here's key. Uh, 5 over 3. Okay, let's do another one. Hey, looking at the same two functions there, so you can copy it. I should have checked that. If I had the computer generate them, then I should look at them first. I should be slapped. But I'm, I'm going to approach it the exact same way. Uh, cotangent is, let's see, the tangent is opposite over adjacent. So this is adjacent over opposite. And secant, again, I'm looking for is the inverse of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so this would be hypotenuse over adjacent. I'm going to draw a right triangle, just a rough sketch. I'm not paying any attention at all to scale. And I'm going to put my theta right here. And my adjacent side is going to be 12. My opposite side is going to be 5. And once again, I'm looking for the hypotenuse. So I'm going to use my Pythagorean theorem. 12 squared plus 5 squared is equal to c squared. This is 144 plus 25 is equal to c squared. That's 169 is equal to c squared. Take the square root of both sides and we get plus or minus 13. 
is equal to C. And because we're looking for the length of a side of the triangle, we're going to ignore the negative root there. So C would be 13. And now I can evaluate the secant of theta, which is defined as the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So the secant of theta would be 13 over 12. If the cotangent of theta in a right triangle, and this is right triangle treating, if the cotangent of theta is 12 over 5, then the secant would have to be 13 over 12, right triangle tree. Okay. So, yay. I better check that one before I move on. 13 over 12, yay. Uh, these are called Pythagorean triplets, though, by the way. The, uh, if they're whole numbers and they fit the Pythagorean theorem, we call them Pythagorean triplets. 3, 4, 5 is the most common one you'll hear all the time. 3, 4, 5. Three, four, five. The legs of a right triangle hypotenuse. But here's another one: five, twelve, thirteen. Where they're whole numbers. Now let's take a look at this one: five, four. Probably a three, four, five. Uh, looking for the cosecant. And the cosecant is the inverse of the sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so this would be hypotenuse over opposite. The secant is the inverse of the cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, so this is hypotenuse over adjacent. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did. I'm going to draw a right triangle. I don't care about scale because I'm not trying to draw a triangle that fits all this. I'm just trying to find the value of the cosecant of theta. I'm going to put theta right here. Uh, the secant of theta is given to me as 5 fourths, so that's the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So in this case, I'm looking for the opposite side. So I'll call it A, we could call it B, we just, we're going to say A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. We don't want to call it C because C is the hypotenuse. So I'm going to say A squared plus B squared, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, the hypotenuse squared. Remember when you're doing the hypotenuse with A, B, and C, A and B are the sides of the triangle, and C is the hypotenuse. And it doesn't matter which one you call A. You, I could have put a B here. We'd get the same answer. Uh, this is A squared plus 16 is equal to 25. Subtract 16 from both sides, and we get A squared is 9. Take the square root of both sides, and we get A is equal to plus or minus 3. We ignore the negative root because we're looking for the side of a triangle. And we're looking for the length, and length is never negative. So we found A3. And now we can find whatever it is we're looking for. We're looking for cosecant. Well, cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. The, it's the inverse of sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse over opposite would be 5 over 3, so we can say that cosecant of theta equals hypotenuse over opposite. And hopefully that's correct. You might run into some radicals if you do. Just, you, know, you guys know how to deal with your radicals. Well, let me see if that's right. 5 over 3, yay. So that's what we're doing. It's a little walk down memory lane, except we're not, you, you probably won't run into very many at all that have sine, cosine, and tangent just to get you used to thinking of the reciprocal relationships between the trig functions. And that's what we were doing. We found the value of a trig function given the value of another trig function. If this is true, what's this within the context of a right triangle? You can do this.